And if you thought that you shouldn't upgrade what isn't broken, you're wrong. And we'll learn how to upgrade Postgres in small and big ways with Leticia. Uh, Leticia, you've been involved with the community uh, since 2007? No. It says here, sort of. But, uh, so working with Postgres in 2007, uh, involved with the community as she was elected the Postgres Europe treasurer. I have questions what that means, but that uh, maybe, for the, maybe for the question rounds, fine. <laughs> like if there's no, no any other questions, I want to know what that means. Um, you're also, uh, you co-founded co Postgres Women. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that. And is a rec recognized Postgres uh, contributor as well. Do you want to take it away? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm Awesome, let's give her a round of applause. Hello, so um, everyone knows they have to upgrade. So everyone is running 15 now and will be running 16 in recipe next month, right? Well, I found out that was not that easy in the real world. So um, first, if you've ever been to one of my talks, you, you should know that my thoughts are quite clean, <laughs> meaning there, are, there should be only a title and a picture in the background. Uh, pictures in the background are sometimes ready to jokes, just so you can stay awake. Uh, if you don't get the jokes, it's okay, because I have a twist in mind, but you can come to me afterwards, I can explain or, or whatever. But if for whatever reason, you're more comfortable with bullet point slides, I do have this tool. And there, uh, look at it here. So feel free to uh, scan this QR code. Uh, is, they are also published on my DBA notebook, which is my blog. Uh, and I will publish them on the PGD Paris website. So there are several ways you can grab the annotated slide. It's not the same. You will have the same background photos, jokes, don't worry, you won't miss anything about the jokes, but you will have belly points on top of it. So, just let me present myself very uh, briefly. Uh, I'm a field CTO at EDB. I'm not working in the fields. Uh, it just means that I'm on the field, <laughs> working with CTOs to uh, make sure that when they have choices, they understand the implications of those choices related to databases. Of course, I'm not relevant when it does not come to databases. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Leticia Avro, and I'm pretty sure my parents did that on purpose. It's very difficult to pronounce if you're not French. But if you're French, you should be okay. Uh, what more can I say? Okay, so I'm a PostgreSQL recognized contributor. Uh, I'm also the treasurer of PostgreSQL Europe. We are not a private association. I'm the treasurer, meaning that I'm keeping, uh, I'm talking with accountants to make sure that we do our taxes on time. We uh, are uh, declaring what we should declare. We work with VAT and so on. Um, and I'm the co-founder of Postgres Women, and Postgres Women was founded there at PGD Paris four years ago. And what more can I say? Uh, oh, I forgot uh, that you can follow me on Faster Than. I'm on Twitter too, I just, uh, I, I'm not posting. I used to cross post, but Twitter broke that. So I don't uh, anymore, and uh, I just won't remove my account because I don't want somebody else using my handle with bad things and doing bad things to my uh, image. So the account will stay there, but no post. Uh, you can also go to my blog, mydbnotebook.org. That's where I try to um, write things that I learn. And also, I'm excited to share that uh, from next month, I will do something that you can send me your questions. And each month, I will pick one question and will answer it lengthy in a blog post. So feel free to send your questions. And uh, I'd be happy to have a ton of questions. And what more, I'm also responsible for pesqltips.org because if you know me, you know that I'm not the kind of woman using WeTools. 
Uh, and I found out that not so many people knew how awesome PSQL was. So this website will just give you a random tip on PSQL. And you can refresh several times. We, at the moment, have 150 tips. Mm, target is around 200 and 300, between 200 and 300. So let's talk about upgrading Postgres. First, uh, I will have to explain how the Postgres project works. Maybe you, do, you already know that, but I, I want you to be aware of the roadmap. And after that, I will explain uh, uh, why you want to upgrade, because it seems that some people don't see the point of upgrading. And uh, if you're French here, could you please explain to me what's magical with Postgres 9.3.5? Because I have so many customers stuck on 9.3.5, and I see nothing magical about that. So uh, yeah, we'll see why you want to upgrade and why upgrading is, uh, can become a higher risk than not upgrading. And then we'll see how, because obviously it's great to know that you have to do something, but if you have no idea how to do it, that will be more difficult. So Postgres roadmap. Um, we uh, work, the project works by patches. So each time someone wants to uh, uh, do an update of Postgres or submit new feature or fix a bug or fix a security flow or whatever, we do patches. And um, we also have a patches review, because it's great to have somebody write, writing some code, but if nobody will review it, it will not end up in Postgres project. And uh, I will also explain the difference between minor and major versions, because that's important. And it's not that uh, strict in other projects, but I can assure you that the project the Postgres project is very strict about what is minor and what is major. And there will be no way you can do something that is against that. And then we will talk about feature freeze. And please, make sure when you want to upgrade to read the release note, because that's where you will find out if you have some other actions to take, if the bugs that were fixed in the corrupted your indexes, for example, things like that. You might be interested in those informations. So the roadmap. The, the year in Postgres begins in April. So in April, we begin to develop the new version of Postgres. That's why I was talking about Postgres 16. Postgres 16 will uh, have a feature phrase in April. So that's basically tomorrow. Um, and after that, we will release several beta versions to make sure that it works well. Uh, if you'd like to run the beta version in uh, production, uh, you're welcome to do so. That will help the community. But make sure you have a good support company. And the support company is OK with it. Uh, and then in, uh, between September and October, we create the first release candidate. We might have several release candidates. And between October and November, we have the new version. So I was talking about Postgres 16 because from next month, we will be begin to develop Postgres 17. Uh, so commit phase. Commit phase are a one month long uh, period happening five times a year. We are having the uh, March commit fest at the moment. You're welcome to go to commitfest.postgresql.org and look at the patches, uh, look at what's going on, uh, what we're developing, what will go to Postgres 17, what, will, what could go to Postgres 16, what, uh, and see what we're working on. Of course, you're welcome also to do code your review if you want. Uh, feel free to do so. Just Downloading a patch, uh, applying it on Postgres, and build, building Postgres is already a new thought we appreciate. So, and uh, feel, yeah, feel free to do whatever you can to help the community because Postgres has uh, no company behind 
so that uh, we're all working pro bono on Postgres code. And the other thing is, I know it's frustrating to do code review, and we would all like to, do, to write code because that's uh, fancier. But if no one's reviewed code, then we will end up in a bottleneck, and your patch will never make it to Postgres. So we, we need people to uh, review. If you're an English uh, native speaker, please review the documentation, because most of us are not, and we need help in writing it in good English. And um, if you don't know uh, where you should start first, because, yeah, obviously, there are some patches that are way more difficult to understand than others. Look at the number of commits first each patch has been through. If it's the first time, then the probability it's, uh, it's a smaller patch is higher than if it's the tenth time this patch goes through the uh, commit first. So, if you don't get that joke, come to me. Uh, minor versions. So, in Postgres, a minor version is just about bug fixes and security flow fixes. There will never be a new feature in Postgres minor version. Also, when you want to upgrade a minor version, you don't have to change anything on your PG data cluster. And what's more, as it's the same data structure, then you can do physical streaming replication between, uh, across minor versions. It's not recommended, but if you want to do a rolling upgrade, that's totally doable. Um, these minor versions happen at least one per quarter. If we have a major security flow we want to fix, then we can have more than one minor version. So if you didn't get the previous one, I guess you won't get that one. Uh, major versions. So uh, this includes new features. It also includes some uh, bug fixes that were uh, too complex to be included into a minor version. The main point of Postgres is trying to be as stable as possible. Uh, so, sometimes, uh, when there is this very tricky bug, we have to refactor a good portion of uh, code to fix it. In that case, you, uh, the probability it's in a major version is higher. As I said, the project is very strict about minor and major version. Uh, do you know how the uh, project decides that a patch is ready for, uh, to be committed? It's happy. It's very simple. It's when some people said they were happy with it, and if no one objects. So uh, that's pretty weird as a way of doing things, but, and not the most efficient, obviously, because it's easier in a company saying, oh, we will ship it, and we ship it. That's not how it works with Postgres. We need no objection. Uh, what more can I say about major versions? So, major version happens once a year, during fall, normally. We don't, as I said, during the roadmap, there is no strict date, release date for Postgres. And that's the difference between working on an open source project and working on a commercial project. When you're working on a commercial project, there are strategies, objectives, and so on. We don't have any. So if it's not ready, it won't be released, which means we can have good quality code because uh, we can do whatever we want. For example, for Postgres 15, we wanted to add a feature called JSON table, which made uh, Postgres more compliant with the SQL standard. We had to remove it because we didn't have the time to test it thoroughly, and we didn't want to add instability into Postgres code. So we removed JSON table and it will be added to Postgres 16, finger crossed. Uh, but that's how we work. We need Postgres to be stable first. Features come later. Uh, feature freeze. Uh, so, as I said, it's very strict, meaning once the feature freeze is declared, there is no way your new feature will make it into Postgres. It will have to wait for one year. 
and uh, no one, uh, as I said, we need some, uh, no one to object. And if you try to push your feature into the new version of Postgres after the feature phase, you will have a lot of objection. I can guarantee you that. Um, so, there are three main reasons why you want to upgrade Postgres. The first one is to be secured. Yeah, IT security is a thing. Um, the second one is to keep up. You don't want to do big version jumps in Postgres. Uh, for example, the other day on Slack, a guy came in saying he had this Postgres database, uh, database and he wanted to um, do logical replication to talk some part of the data to a data warehouse. So we were saying, OK, you just use logical replication. And the guy said, I'm using Postgres 8.3. Yeah, <laughs> and we were like, OK, so there's no logical replication. There's no PG logical extension. There's no physical streaming replication. There's no physical backups. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And even if you want to upgrade an 8.3 now, you can't use PG upgrade. You will have to jump through several versions to do it because PG upgrade in uh, Postgres 15 is only guaranteed to work until Postgres 10. And that might be a problem for you. So you might have to do several jumps to find out. But even PG upgrade was created uh, with Postgres 9.2. So I have no idea how you can migrate with uh, uh, fast a lot of data out of Postgres 8.3 to something like Postgres 15. And that's because uh, they didn't keep up with the versions. But again, I understand that you can't upgrade every year because we have a major version every year, which is a lot. But uh, you know that when you have to clean your house, you'd rather clean it every, uh, every two or three days than having uh, to clean it once a year because that's a n not the same amount of year. Uh, of, of work. And one last thing is you might want to upgrade just to give back to the community. We know that uh, Postgres is free. Uh, what uh, uh, the analogy I'm using is it's free as a puppy, meaning if you've been given a puppy, yes, the puppy is free, but you will still have to use a lot of money to take care of it. The same thing with Postgres. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the choice is free, the consequences are, uh, aren't. So, security. Um, that's not my children. Don't call the children emergency services. That's not my children. Uh, so, first thing about security, and I'm sorry, I have to say it, but it is important. Uh, I have to say it because I'm not sure everyone knows uh, from what I've seen. <laughs> uh, so, just I'm saying it, and uh, even though Postgres code is really good, it's a delight to work with Postgres code, if you haven't seen any Postgres code, uh, uh, source code, go watch it, go read it. Even though you are not fluent in C, you would see the quality of the code. Uh, but even with the best code, no code is bug-free and no code is totally secured. So, uh, and the other thing to keep in mind is you're working on an open source project, meaning that each time we will have a new version, we will publish the security flows that we're fixing. So everyone all around the world will know that this particular version of Postgres will have those security flows. And that might be a security problem for you. That's why you want to upgrade. Uh, so just a small note about uh, developers validating software, uh, validating post against a minor version of Postgres. So that's embarrassing for them because it means they don't know the Postgres project and how it works. So first, don't make a fool of yourself by saying that your software is well validating against Postgres 10.4 because yeah, you're, sure you're demonstrating how little you know about Postgres, 
which can be a problem if you're publishing that on your website and your customers go there. Maybe they won't buy your product because you demonstrated your little knowledge. Uh, second thing is um, if uh, you validate your software against a minor version, it means that uh, you have no automated tests. Most of the time, you, well, more than 99% of the time, upgrading a minor version will not change anything in your software because, again, I've seen the uh, code we're writing and I know that uh, you won't use those very specific tricks in Postgres that can break, but whatever. Uh, if you force your customers to use a minor version because your software is only validated under this uh, buggy minor version, what happens should your customer get a security issue due to this minor version? Are you legally responsible? I do think so. So think about that. And uh, yeah, so if you're developers and your software is validated against a minor version, that's bad. And please fix it. Uh, about Postgres supported versions policy, we support five previous versions. And that's impressive, and I've never seen any closed source uh, project supporting five major versions of the product. Um, uh, when we say we support five previous versions, it means that you will have bug fixes, we, you will have security fixes, you will also have recompatibility rec on, the, uh, on some tools. For example, if you want to use PG Upgrade, it will work. If you are running Postgres 10 and you want to use PG Dump Postgres uh, version 15, it will work, and so on. So that's important. And uh, the problem is when you try to favor retro compatibility, then you can't move on, and the project still has to move on. So that uh, we had to fix a, a number of versions. If you're running a version older than Postgres 10, you should consider upgrading, seriously. Uh, keeping up, as I said, having big jumps of version a major version in Postgres can be a problem because the migration path is not that obvious. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to do small upgrades over, over a big upgrades once every five years. Uh, it would be better if you could upgrade every year, but if you can only upgrade every two or three years, that's fine. Please stay in the supported versions. That will make life easier for uh, pro bono people answering your questions first. And uh, second, you should uh, pay less money for your support company because that's also important. As I said, it's free as a puppy, so <laughs> you might want to have a support company. Uh, so going back to the community, I know some uh, people are running uh, release candidate versions in production. Uh, thank to the, uh, we, uh, I really appreciate that, I really thank them. What you can do, uh, and I know that you might be reluctant to run release candidate in production, which is fine, I won't really blame you for that, but please keep in mind that you can run beta version and release candidate version on recipe, because normally your recipe is less risky than your production setup. Uh, and you will, uh, there are two advantages for you. The first one is, should you find a bug, it will be prioritary to be fixed for your custom uh, needs. So that's great for you. And the second thing, again, Postgres is free, maybe you can give back a little. So, how to upgrade? We will talk about tools, but I think the most important thing when you have to upgrade is your mind, your brain. And that's the most important tool you will need. You need to understand what you're doing, and you need to understand... Uh, and again, I have a lot of customers asking me, what is the best solution? 
And I was a consultant for a long time, and you know this answer to all tech questions from consultants, it, it depends. <laughs> if it was obvious, the customer will already have the answer. If they need me, it's because the answer is it depends. Uh, so let's go dive for two, three days of consulting to find out your needs, what you want to do exactly, because it's clear in your mind, but we, you have to communicate with others. So we need to really understand what you're trying to do, and then we can give you a migration path. But I will try to give you some clues. So first, can you afford a service description? If you can't afford a service description, which can be fine, it means that you already have the setup to have more than five nines in production, so you should be fine because it means you're running uh, Postgres distributed, and so uh, it can do sim uh, near uh, zero downtime upgrade, major upgrades. So you'll be fine. If you want to achieve five nines or more than five nines without this kind of setup, I think that's not doable actually with the current state of Postgres. So you might reconsider either your architecture or your SLA, your, your, your RTO, your recovery time objective. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, if you can't afford service description, you should have the right architecture in place. Um, so, release not. I already said it, but I'm a mom, I know that for someone to understand something, you have to say it three times, like, please, uh, please take your shoes in the closet. Please take your shoes in the closet. Last time, please take your shoes in the closet. So, release not, please read them. Uh, for example, in 14.3, we fixed a very important bug. Uh, that was corrupted indexes if you were using re-index concurrently. It means that you might have silence index corruption in your database. So when you were upgrading to the next minor version or the next major version, uh, with, the bugs, with the bug being fixed, you need to re-index your indexes. You will need to rebuild your indexes. So uh, please read the release note, make sure you have understood. Ask questions if you don't. Um, the community is there. We are on IRC, we are on mailing list, we are on Slack. There is also a Telegram channel. So there are many ways to contact us. Uh, when I when I see uh, read the release note, I mean every each and every release note between your minor version to the next minor version you're targeting. So that can be a lot, in particular if you are doing a big jump of version, but you really need that. Um, and again, read the release notes. I hope you get it now. Uh, tools. So there are three ways of doing a major upgrade in Postgres. I won't talk about minor upgrade because we just change the binary and you're fine. So uh, I think that's not very important. And if you want to do a near zero downtime uh, uh, minor upgrades, you just need to uh, upgrade the standby, fail over, and upgrade the former primary, and you'll be fine. So minor upgrades are not a problem. We're talking about major upgrades. Uh, there are three ways to do that. First is exporting, importing your data. Second is um, using PG upgrade. And the last one is logical replication. Uh, it's not because you, uh, you have the solutions that can do near zero downtime uh, uh, upgrade that you need it. Uh, it does not mean that, of course, you can do a near zero upgrade, than, uh, near zero downtime upgrade, but it will be more complex, and it means that it will cost you more time. Your company will have to spend more money. So maybe that's not the accurate solution for you. So first, exporting, importing. So uh, there will be a service disruption because. 
why, uh, if you don't stop the application while you're exporting, then you will lose all this new data. So we need to stop the application, then export, and then re-import, which can take a lot of time if you have a lot of data. So again, I have some questions for people with a lot of data. Uh, a lot meaning over 500 terabytes, over one petabyte, whatever. Uh, are you allowed to keep all that? Because we have GDPR here, maybe you're not allowed. If you are allowed, maybe you can divide and conquer and use foreign data wrapper to archive some old data, even though it's still accessible, but it will be a little slower or whatever. So, um, the good thing with exporting and importing is it will remove your bloat. And if you're having a huge bloat problem, first you need to tune your auto vacuum system. And second, you, you could use uh, export import to get rid of it. Um, and uh, the, other, the good thing too is if you have indexes being sil uh, silently corrupted, it will remove uh, indexes corruption. So that's good too. And the last thing is if you have some corrupted data block, then you will know. It won't fix it, but you will know, <laughs> which is good too. So, uh, the first four steps to export import are the same with PG upgrade and with uh, Postgres logic, logical replication. The first step is install the new version of Postgres. And then you will create a new instance. You will take a physical backup and you will test this backup because this backup is important, and you don't want a Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's backup situation in production. So please test it. Then we can begin. You stop the application. You make sure you have all the walls between uh, the beginning of your backup and the moment you, where you stop your, the application so that you can recover. Uh, you export the non-database object with PG dump all using the dash J flag, it's for globals, meaning you will export the, the table space definition and the roles. And then you will export your databases one by one using PG dump. You can parallelize that if you use a directory format. Uh, and you can, if you have several databases, you can parallelize this too, if you have enough CPU, CPU and memory, of course. Uh, and then you will import the non-database objects. Again, that's something you can parallelize between databases, between files, if you use the directory format. Uh, so you will uh, then, oh, sorry. You will import the non-database objects, so roles, table space definition, and then you will import the databases one by one. Then you will stop the old instance. You will uh, either reconfigure your new instance, because if you had two instances running on the same, on the same host, it means that uh, you had another port. So either you configure the app to switch to the new port, or you change the uh, new instance configuration to listen on the old port and you start the, the application, and you take another backup. I didn't put it here, but test it again. So that's all for exporting, importing. Major problem is if you have a lot of data, it will take a long time. So you might not want that. From Postgres 9.2, we created a tool called PG Upgrade. Uh, PG Upgrade will imply a service disruption, but the, it will be faster than the uh, exporting, importing thing. In particular, if you're using the dash dash link flag, it won't copy over the data files. It will just rewrite the PG catalog uh, tables. Um, I've seen, uh, if you don't have too many database uh, objects, it should be way faster than exporting, importing. Uh, if, uh, and if you have some data. But the, uh, the right point is it won't, the time needed for the disruption won't depend on the size of your databases, which is important. So usually it's between five and five minutes should be enough. Five minutes of disruption should be enough to perform PG uh, upgrade. 
Um, again, if you have millions of rows on your catalog, uh, on your PG catalog, then that might not be the case. Uh, the other thing is, which is great with Atoll, it's, it's simple. You just run the tool, and you're fine. So just how it works, you install the new version of Postgres, you cr uh, create a new instance, uh, you take a physical backup, you test your backup, and then you use PT upgrade. And uh, of course, before migrating, you have tested that procedure on your recipe environment. So uh, you should know how much time is needed uh, to migrate. And then you start the app, and you take another backup. So as I said, it's very simple. Uh, if it crashes in the middle and you're using the dash dash link flag, then you will have to restore from a backup. Uh, don't use a cluster that had been halfway migrated because you will be in trouble. Logical replication. So, this is the thing that most of my customers say, oh, we want that, near zero downtime migration, we want that. Remember that it's more complex. It will take more time, it will take more money. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe having a six months long project against having five minutes of disruption is not uh, that uh, obviously in favor of near zero downtime migration. So how do we do it? Install the new version of Postgres, right. Create a new instance, right. Set up the logical replication. So if you're using Postgres 10, you should be fine. If you're using before Postgres 10, then you will have to use the PG logical uh, extension, which is, uh, yeah, which can be a problem. And then stop the application, set the sequences. So we have a problem with logical replication. It's that it does not uh, uh, replicate sequences, because by design, from the SQL standard, sequences are not transactional objects, so they are not in the wall files. So if, uh, if you see here, I said that you had to stop the application, meaning description, from that point. What you can do if you don't want to, uh, you can set the setup, uh, the, the sequences with a little margin and, uh, and stop the application right after, so that you can uh, start the app right after, and it will be less than a second of disruption, if you need it. But then you have to remove the logical replication, because, because you don't want to keep it, and of course, take another backup. So that's how you can perform it. It seems simple la said that way, but the set the sequences uh, 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 step can be an issue. The other problem is, um, that if your application is doing DDL, DDL is not replicated, so that uh, any changes on the primary won't show up on the secondary. So that can be a problem too. So that's one thing I didn't mention because it depends. It's extensions. Depending on the uh, extensions you're using, then you might end up with a lot of problems to find the right migration path for your particular setup. And I can't cover that even in three days, because it really depends on the extensions. And if you know the Postgres uh, system, you know that the number of extensions is impressive. So um, uh, what you have to do, uh, so if you're using contribution extension, meaning the, the extensions already uh, provided with Postgres, you'll be fine. If you're using others, like uh, PostGIS, then it will, become to be, it will become to be fun, actually. But um, uh, there is a very complicated uh, matrix compliance between Postgres version and PostGIS version. But you're not using PostGIS with another tool like QGIS. And then there is another matrix compatibility between PostgreSQL version and QGIS versions. So you will have to put that together and find out what is your target and what can be the migration path. But that's, that's a very difficult part. If you are using a lot of 
uh, extensions that are not part of the PostgreSQL project, then migrating will be a problem. Well, will be more difficult. Uh, so, my only solution, generic solution for that problem, is to avoid big jumps and plan ahead. As I said, the best tool you can use to upgrade Postgres is your own brain. And that's all for me. I have five minutes for questions. Thank you so much for your talk. Um, I think we're in between you know, like this and lunch, so I don't know if there's any questions, but there's room for questions. So if anyone has any questions, now is the time. Um, as with uh, logical replication, I encountered um, difficulties with tables which don't have any um, primary index key? or primary key. And do you know about um, a method to quickly identify if you have a lot of tables, some are mixed, some are have an identifier uh, or identity and others don't have, uh, is there a tool or something to yeah. identify quickly which of these thousand tables I will give you, uh, I won't give you one tool, I will give you a GitHub uh, repository of tools. Uh, I don't know if you know PGX, PG Experts. Uh, it's a, a California company, they're working in Postgres for the last 20 years, something like that. They have this great repository on GitHub with a lot of scripts, and one of them is missing priority keys. Uh, no, it's missing indexes, but it will tell you there is no primary key on this table. It will also uh, tell you which uh, uh, foreign keys are not indexed. Because by default, foreign keys are not indexed in Postgres, but they are good candidates. Mm -hmm. And it will also uh, look at the ratio of writes and read into your database to find out which columns are good candidates for indexes, or which indexes are unused, which is important too. Thank you. Perfect. Another question, maybe? In that case, uh, let's we're, go eat. We're, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're going for lunch. I want you back here at, well, I mean, another host is going to take over, but I still want you to be back here at half past one. Uh, lunch is served right outside this room, if I'm not mistaken. Also, there's an opportunity if you go downstairs to take group photos. So you might want to do that if you're in the mood for something like that. Let's give it up for Leticia one more time. Thank you so much.